Hello and welcome to the Conscious Communion Podcast, where we traverse through the inner dwellings of the human experience through conversation. I'm your host, Danae. Join me as we explore the interconnection of creativity and community. Kelsey Miller is a manager of accounting for Tony Robbins and a junior broker for a financial firm. She has her bachelor's in accounting and has intentionally assisted clients from all different walks of life to find more financial freedom and flexibility. Kelsey is smart, kind, compassionate, and motivated. She is a mama to the sweetest three-year-old and the wife to one of the kindest men I know. Here is Kelsey Miller. Yay! Oh my God, that was amazing. You're amazing. (laughs) Of course. Thank you for having me. This is like a pretty epic platform and I just am super honored that you wanted to have me on here. Thank of you. Of course. Yeah. You have helped us so much with our own finances and I felt that it was imperative that I bring you on, you know, for folks yeah. to to just get some more insight. Money Definitely. is not the most comfortable topic to talk about. No, and it's crazy because there's so much of it out there. It's like infinite money. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super important. I mean, we need it to live. It's, it's a lot of people are like, Oh, money's bad. Money's this, but you like, you literally need it to live and function and, you know, do the things you want to do. Right. Totally. Yeah. No, I think in my hippie phase and my like very, (laughs) like when I was like full and I feel, I feel like I still have that essence, like wrapped up in me and I will for the rest of my life. However, there was a point in time where I was really like just wanting to live off the grid and not wanting to utilize money as a tool. And with having you as a resource, I it, it, it's funny that it took so long for me to actually reach out to you. It literally was the transition from jobs and and not knowing what to do with my 401k. Like, where am I going to put all this money? And I was like, I need help. And you were the first person I thought of. Wow. Thank you. I know we kind of connected um, at Caitlin's little shindig, but um, it's funny how just like full circle when you are starting, if you're not, it's all about timing. So when you're not Mm -hmm. really into it, the minute that you're like, okay, I should really figure it out, that's like when things come to mind. And I feel like that happens to me more often than not, like as far as clients go, like this is my seventh year doing this about. Um, And I feel now more than ever, people are like, hey, are you still like teaching this or doing this or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, because it just, when you're in a different phase of your life, you don't like necessarily think like, I need a financial planner or I need to talk to somebody about you know, saving for this or retiring with that. Um, but once you do get to that point, that's where I can come in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I would love for you to just share really, I, I know I mentioned what you do, but just giving some more insight for folks who don't know what a broker is or do not know what a fa- financial advisor is and how you could potentially support them and what that would look like. Yeah. So um, basically, when i mean and it's all about like you said being intentional about what your goals are and what you're really striving to accomplish so talking to somebody um just in a like a baseline like where's my money kind of going like that's where you have to start and a lot of where to start and that's like the, the forefront of beginning any type of savings or what have you so just knowing how much money's coming in how much is going out. And when I first started doing this, a lot of my clients were obviously servers and, you know, my friends who weren't really into like making a plan or anything like that. But when we got down to like the nitty gritty of, okay, you have $5,000 coming in every month. You only really have 2,500 in expenses going out. You should have $2,500 left over to save for whatever you want to do. And when they say, it's like, okay, that's where we need to like, pinpoint what's happening, track what you're doing, uh, be more accountable to yourself and like anything else that you're doing just to make sure that you're on the right track, especially if you do have goals Mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So um, basically uh, seven years ago, 
I was reached out to um, by someone on LinkedIn and I was in the middle of getting my accounting degree and they said, hey, we'll train you. Um, we're trying to open office in Carlsbad. We just need really good people, good work ethic. And I was like, that sounds like me. And I'm already in finance, so why not, right? So I am I started out there. They kind of, they teach you everything you need to know, but they basically say like, you got to practice what you preach. So <laughs> bottom line, this is what we do for clients. We sit down, we line by line, go through everything um, that you would technically go over with any other financial advisor or bank or whatever to get you on the right track. And then, um, and then stemming from that, just push forward, like stick to it, like stick to your guns, like stick to, I don't know. It's just full circle. It's crazy to like think where I started and where I am now. Like we obviously don't have an office anymore, but even in the virtual space, it's almost even easier to help people because now they're not driving to you. You're not driving to them. Um, and you can just help more people that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can. I mean, you helped us and we're in Oregon. So it was so convenient for us to just jump on Zoom and just make it happen. And the first couple, just from speaking from my own experience, the first couple of sessions, like, of, because it felt like sessions, it felt like therapy. For sure. It it (laughs) felt like going through, especially because of where Brian and I came from. And I know we shared this with you, but I feel like it's important for listeners to kind of just get an idea of where we were at. We, mm-hmm. we weren't comfortable talking about money. We were not comfortable talking about our finances. And yet we knew that we had goals in mind. We knew we wanted to buy a home. Mm-hmm. We knew that we wanted to have a baby at some point in time, potentially if that was in our path. Yeah. And you know, those things require finances. They're not cheap. So in planning for that and preparing mentally, we also knew that we had to kind of work through past experiences and and thoughts that we had had about money because our parents, while they may have, they, they kind of prepared us, but but not not really, but not really. It was more like, don't get a credit card. Okay, cool. There wasn't really any preparation in regards to how to save, how to potentially have your money work for you and so on and so forth. So when you came in, it was just this breath of fresh air. Wow. And, and now, now that we're finding our stride a bit, now that we're able to kind of like actually see the money work for us, we're like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, we could have been doing this for, for years. Isn't that crazy? Like, and it's funny because you are totally ingrained about money, how your parents view money. Same with politics, people, literally everything. And I yeah. same same thing. My parents were like, well, not right now, or we don't have the money for that. And um, if you don't have cash, you can't afford it. You know, it's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you yeah. sure? But yeah, 100%. Like, and it, I think the hardest part for people is like, they're so either they're ashamed of their finances. Um, there's a stigma around it, whatever, what have you. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You can't move forward without being like opening up and being really, really honest about your financial situation, a thousand percent. Um, whether it's. I'm in a crap load of debt trying to dig out. Like if you don't, and the only way you can really help yourself is by seeking out someone who can potentially help you, whether that's a debt consolidator, interest kills you. Like Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, what kind of credit cards you have. If you are only making minimum payments, that will kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, and obviously everybody's in some kind of debt, I feel like, but learning how to manage it and making, like you said, money work for you is what it's all about. And you got to start somewhere. I mean, you guys were all in our thirties, right? Mm -hmm. And even if you started now, you'd still have 30 years to save and have your money work for you. So it's better Mm -hmm. to start now than always have an excuse at 30 and 40 and 50 and Mm -hmm. the kids are here. We're going to school. They're going to school. We need to buy a house. Like, you know, there's always an excuse at every single age. And it's just, you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision for your family, for yourself, for your sanity, for your, you know, your soul, um, Mm -hmm. to 
to want to save. And at, in the beginning, I think for me, it was more about saving to like travel. Like that was in my heart. All I wanted to do was like travel and see the world because we'd never really been anywhere growing up. Right. And so I was very intentional about saving money specifically for travel. I didn't have a house that I owned. I didn't have like my car was paid off. Like that was the one thing that I was like, I want to travel and I'm going to be intentional about saving for that. Obviously now that Jason and I are married, like we were really specific about saving when we bought our house. Um, like you said, we have a kid now. It's just like saving for his school, making sure that he's set up with, you know, inflation could be a hundred grand to go to school <laughs> by that time. Um, but yeah, just being very intentional and making decisions and like sticking to your decisions. It's mm -hmm. like super, super important, I think. Yeah, definitely. I, I, Brian and I, and it's not like we have like, oh, we're not, we're not super well off, but to know that we're able to like pinpoint where our money is actually going. Whereas <laughs> prior we were spending frivolously. Like I think anyone who's not consciously aware of how they're spending their money is frivolously spending in some kind of way. And it's, you know, it's like you, you can do that. That's if that's what feels good for you in the space and time that you're in by all <laughs> means. However, if you're looking to, again, do things with intention, if you're looking to travel, if you're looking to buy a home, if you're looking to prepare for something down the line mm -hmm. and it's going to cost money, why not try to, you know, fine tune that frivolous spending into to a way that you can actually save? Yeah, I know. And I have a friend who's like, well, you're not going to die with your money. You spend it now. And I'm like, yeah, but I also don't want to like, I don't want to have to depend on my kids like when I retire, you know, how a lot of, I mean, especially now with the market tank not too long ago and who knows what's going to be happening soon. But like my dad's 401k turned into a 201k not too long ago. So like mm. all the money that he had to retire, it was basically cut in half and he can't like go back to work. That's just like, now he has to deal with it and depend on the market. So it's like pretty heartbreaking, especially like in that sense. Like, I don't want to have to, I don't want to stress my kid out about having to take care of me when I'm older. You know what I mean? Because I, thought... I didn't plan properly. So mm -hmm. that's a big thing. It is a big thing. And I think, and I think that that there's so many things to say about that, right? Like culture plays a role. It's, it's all, it's all very interesting how that all can be digested, if you will. Yep. But if we can make anyone's life easier, including our own, why not? Why, why not? Totally. I'm here for it. Here for you it. You know, <laughs> and, and I think with, with saving, with saving more, I feel an ease that I've never felt in my entire life. Like literally my entire life. Peace of mind, girl. That's all. That's really all it is. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. And you really helped with that. So thank you. Good. Thank you so much. I, I, I just, you know, what I really would love for you to share, like what it would look like for someone who potentially is hesitant and like what the baby step processes are for you onboarding someone new and working with someone. I yeah. know that you're really intentional about getting to know them and, and kind of just share with, with folks what that looks like. Yeah. So like I said, it comes from people come just from me obviously doing this for a while or, you know, referrals as you know, you recently gave me, but it, Ultimately, like the first visit has to do with just like getting to know them and like their situation and what it's really all about, like what I do, what I try to do, because if you don't have a connection with somebody that you're going to be like putting your trust in with their finances, like that's a very big deal. And if off the bat, I can tell like we aren't really vibing, I can uh, like pass them off to someone in my office who I think that they would really mesh well with and like listen to because I think you want to listen to people that you trust and you want to really like soak in the information that they're giving you when 
you feel it comes from the heart. And that only comes from like, obviously getting to know somebody and their situation, like I just said. Um, but yeah, so just starting from the basics, how much money do you bring in? What are the absolute necessary things that you need to pay for, whether it's your home, your car, obviously, if you're working, you have to be able to get to work. You got to feed yourself, you know, electricity, gas, water, like very, very necessity based things, um, taking those out of your income. And then the things that you think that you really need that you can still obviously afford. So whether that's your gym membership or your Netflix or whatever, right? <laughs> Everyone these days needs Netflix. Um, but just going down to the basics, like really understanding what's coming in and what's going out. And if for some reason things aren't matching the way you think, it's just, you gotta find it, you gotta figure that's it out. Right. And when yeah. I first started doing this, um, I was one of those people, I was like, yeah, I should have like three. I don't have any money left over. Like I'm spending everything that I make. Like there's no way I can save. And then when I got down to it, I was like, where does that extra $3,000 a month go? Like straight up, where does it go? Um, and so just, I mean, I just met with a client who was like, who told me the same thing. Like we don't have any money left over. And I was like, according to this and this and this, you should have about two grand. And they're like, no. And I said, okay, well, March coming up, fresh start, start tracking your bank, your credit cards, like where is your money like actually going? Um, and obviously everybody's situation is different. So we try to cater your needs to a product rather than a product to your, to your needs, which is, I think a lot of financial companies are like, well, I sell this, so I'm going to have to give you this. So I sell this, so I have to give you this. Um, and what's really cool about the firm that I work for is that we don't have any obligations to any company. We can really broad span it, hundreds of companies, thousands of products, and just be like, this is what they have. This is kind of what they need. And then find something that meshes well between the two of those things. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what was so cool about hearing about all of the, there were so many different things and types of accounts and yeah. things that I had literally never heard of. And I was like, whoa, learning curve, like, yeah, you know, and it was just so fun to hear about because it was nuanced for me. It was mm -hmm. literally just something I've never learned about. And I love learning, but again, because it was so uncomfortable, it just felt so foreign and just felt yeah. a little icky in the beginning. Felt and it a little feels, icky. Yes. And it feels almost too good to be true. Like, this exists. Why did nobody tell me? Or this exists. Why didn't my parents tell me? Or why don't they tell, give you this at work? You know, like, then you start really thinking, like, what have I been doing with my life? Like, I work at a place that doesn't even, like, give me health insurance. They've never even told me about a 401k. Like, what am I actually doing with my life? Then that's when it, like, you go down the rabbit hole of, like, really, though. The rabbit hole. The rabbit hole. The rabbit hole of, like, yeah, well, because there's a population that we know about in the United States that's making their money work for them and they're chilling. They're oh. chilling. And they're chillin'. I mean, I don't like envy them, nor do I want to like emulate some of the things they're doing. But if I can have my money work for me, I'll sign up for that. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. And and that's all what, personal too. Like their kids are going to be well versed in money. Their kids will be well versed in money. Um, it's really, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to break the curve here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to break the curve. I want, I didn't learn about it, so I'm going to learn about it. Teach the people that I know. If they take anything from what I've learned, that's all I can ask for. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, Brian and I literally the other day we were like, we're breaking a generational pattern here with the, with what we're doing with our finances. And yeah. that feels good. Yeah. Like we were talking about it two days ago Yeah, and it felt so nice to like, because we were just moving things around and you know, it's just, it's just fun to be able to yeah. do that. And it's like buying something, but you're not totally it's, it's the same feeling of, of doing something for you. It's self care. Yes. And how good does it feel to just like look at your account and be like, we did that? You know what I mean? 
-hmm. like just to be in a space where you're not like where are how are we going to pay for this to be in a place where you can look at your any account that you have which you have num numerous now but any account and be like we made a decision look at what we're doing for ourselves for our family for our future and just like honing in on that feeling just like how like freaking proud you are of yourself right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you could be in a space of like scarcity and like how am i going to pay for this what's coming next like and that's not good for you. Not good no. For your health, not good for your heart. Like just being stressed about money sucks. And I've been there. It does. It sucks. No, it sucks. Yeah. yeah. What was it like when you, because, because you've taken yourself so full circle, like what has that process been like for you to take yourself through that process of being stressed about money to now just. Okay. That's, that's actually funny that you say that. Cause I was just talking to Jason about this, but. <laughs> and I apologize. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Um, when I first, when I was serving, and I think a lot of people can maybe connect to this, but when you're serving and you don't know how much money you're going to make that day, you're always thinking like, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to do this? Like, how am I going to live? How am I going to make it to work? How am I going to do this? And it's stressful. And I wholeheartedly went into this just wanting to be like, I don't want to worry about where money's coming from. I don't, I don't want to have a scarcity mindset. I want to live in the moment, still YOLO my life up, but like obviously have money in the bank. You know what I mean? And we have come so far, like in such a short amount of time, it's pretty wild. Just like changing environments, like work environments. I went from being really worried about where money was coming from to obviously being on a salary, which helped. Um, but being very intentional about where we put our money, when we put our money in certain places, um, knowing when to buy things, just like being very, and also like, just like I told you, being very cautious and aware that like there is so much money out there, it's not even funny. And so now, we get like, I get voted at work to get like bonuses every year at the end of the year. Like people, I know, <laughs> epic, but um, like people vote for whoever they want in the company to be like a platinum player or a culture queen. And I've gotten that three years in a row now, which is pretty epic. So just like getting a huge bonus at the end of the year that you're not expecting is just like money. Just like if you think money comes to you, then it just like shows up. I swear mm. to God. Finding fifty dollars on the street, getting a check in the mail from the IRS, like sorry you overpaid, like anything like that. I swear it like comes, mm. it, it comes in threes. It's really crazy. I love that. I love that idea and that concept. And I feel like that's been like even just things that have been happening, whether it be like gifts that aren't necessarily you're not seeing that like physical monetization, but you're yes. like getting something and you're not having to pay for it yourself. Yes. You know what I mean? Which is yes. still money. Yes. I mean, like if you're not having to pay for something that you would normally have to pay for it, that's still money yeah. to me. And right. It's like, yep. People pay that, for your Starbucks in front of you, like little things like that, you know, just every little bit helps. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that we're like, we're not rich by any means. But we just bought a house in like the craziest market of all time. And when we were first looking, I was like, can we even do this? Like, obviously going back to my, like, can we do this? Can we afford this? Right. And then I was like, I'm so dumb. We get our, Jason gets a raise every single year. I get promoted every single year. I could very well get a bonus. We could pull this off. Like just switching my mindset. We got the, like the second mm -hmm. offer we put on a house we got like, without and it didn't it didn't like stress me out like how are we going to afford this it was like f yeah like we did this we planned for it we saved we pulled this off and now we're home and we're making it our own and we can like grow in it with our family and just like what a super sick accomplishment like truly it's insane truly and then to have again, had that mindset before the scarcity mindset. And then to, 
to just transfer that intention and that energy into something new to then regenerate something beautiful and something regenerative, right? Like you get to regenerate this beautiful new cycle and process for your family and for the generations to come for Beckham and, and yeah. What a cool kid. Your sweet family. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I just, I think that to, to really go back to the idea of like the scarcity mindset, like I, I I was coming from a place of debt before and it's crazy the timing of everything because we had just paid off my like credit card debt yeah. pretty pretty soon before we started yeah, yeah, yeah we well, met with you I mean I've known you for quite a while now I know <laughs> almost over I mean over 10 years which is crazy Yeah uh, we were babies when we first met. So like the, I remember the first time you actually even talked to me about money. It just was not on my radar. It was yeah. when I was using my money irresponsibly. So I didn't want to talk to you about money because yes. it made me so uncomfortable. Yes. I was like, I don't want you to look at this thing. So I'm not going to share anything with you with it. Yes. And even, even after I had gotten out of debt and even after I was like, well, there was still a sense of shame because I knew that we were making enough to save, but we weren't saving mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And so that was like the threshold that I had to get over. And it's like, get over yourself. You have to make a first step moving forward. You did. And and I just would encourage anyone that's interested to reach out to Kelsey and, and, and do the thing. Do the thing. And you know what? I, I always try to tell my clients, like, there is always somebody worse off than you. If you think you're in it and this is like, you're low, it's not. I have seen some shenanigans and we have gotten those people out of their shenanigans. You know what I mean? Like, you may have think like, oh, I have 10 grand in debt. What if you had a hundred grand in debt? What if you were about to lose your house? What if you fell for bankruptcy? What if you didn't have your job anymore and you were just really, you know, there's so many Mm. circumstances and so many things to be ashamed of that you shouldn't be. Life happens. You have just pick yourself back up. Know that you need the help or even just guidance, whether it's, it's not even a fact of like needing to save in your 401k or any other type of product. It's really just like making a decision to just like be happy. And mm-hmm. money can do that for you, even if it's just a little. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the freaking lottery or anything, but just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Don't absolutely. be ashamed. Just don't be ashamed ever. I think that's huge for people to hear because I because shame is deeply attached to many folks and, and, you know, wherever they're coming from, Mm -hmm. there's money wounds and scarcity, whether Mm -hmm. it be just lack of worth, lack of monetary gain, lack of something or other. It all comes back to how we can receive money and income and actually like the gifts the universe potentially could be giving us if we would just get out of our own way. 100%. 100%. (laughs) And you, I'm going to say it a thousand times on here. You have to make a decision to get out of that way. And we are ingrained with it at one point. And it just needs to be like a 180. Like, I do not want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be in debt. I want to start saving for my house, for two kids, whatever. And just being like a really big thing I try to teach is if you're trying to save, obviously set that goal, but be every month, make it like a non-negotiable. Like I need to make it like a bill, right? Like $200 a month, no questions asked needs to go here. Like make it necessary, not, okay, I need to pay for this, pay for this, pay for this, pay off a little bit of debt. And then whatever's left go to savings. It needs to be like a very upfront, like a bill, $200 a month or 500 or a thousand or wherever you're starting has to be a non-negotiable like treat it like a bill yes treat it like a bill i think treat it like a bill is a good word because that's we like even 
like, to be honest, we got started, right? And then, like, Christmas came around, and then, like, we had some other big bills that were coming out that were new bills, and yeah. we were, like, dancing with it, and we were like, yeah. okay, well, we got to do the damn thing, so let's yeah. just do it and treat it like a bill. And that's, we were having that conversation of, okay, this is not, this is at this point in our lives where we're at, this is non-negotiable. Yep. If we're trying to do this thing, if we're trying to buy the home that we want, we have to save. We can't not have money to do that. Yeah. And kids cost money. Kids cost money. I'll tell you straight. <laughs> having a baby, <laughs> having a baby costs money. Straight up. I, honestly, with people that don't have insurance, it like blows my mind like how much a baby it costs to have a baby. Like when the bills were coming, I was like, good Lord, if we had not had insurance, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like what do people do? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not okay. It's, it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. It's not okay. That's that's a whole separate conversation because America needs to figure it out it's because broken. it's not okay. okay. Not okay. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you first, the uh, diapers are a real expense, like on the real, <laughs> like nobody's like, oh, kids are really great. Have kids. They say it'll be fun. Diapers. What the heck? Why are they so expensive? It's crazy. Uh, That's another topic. But... Well, especially because it's like, it's non-negotiable. Yes. <laughs> and like they, they go through so, like, I swear to God, Beckham. Like in one change, like four diapers, like it just kept like anyways. accumulating. <laughs> yeah, I was like, gotta get another, gotta get another, gotta get another. things like, kept happening. Yes, <laughs> yes, four diapers. Dang it! Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, uh... But yeah. Same for kids, kids' futures. You know, just and we're told certain things. Like, uh, really wealthy people are like, oh, do a five twenty nine, do a five twenty nine, do a five twenty nine. Well. 529s, I, I think we talked about this briefly. We touched on it, but 529 plans can only be used like specifically for like college. So if mm -hmm. your kid decides not to go to college, then that money's just floating around and you can only transfer it to a family member. So it's like, we have to be very intentional about not putting all our eggs in one basket for situations specifically like that. Like what if they decide they want to go to music school or, you know, run away and I don't know, become a chef. I don't know. Just there are so many different avenues of career now, like trade, trade school, anything like that. Just can't put all your eggs in one basket. Just no, that's not fair to your kid either. Kid. Like. I know. Well, it sucks. Especially if you're like, that's where you were told to save by somebody. And then you were stuck with it and you could do nothing with it. And you died with it. Just kind of like, just like things they don't tell you, which happened to my cool. family, you know, just sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that was hard to like watch that happen to your family and then learn about everything and just yeah. that process of it's yucky. Mm -hmm. Cause you but I'm sure that you go ahead. You think you're doing something nice for your, like your family. And then they end up not being able to use any of the money and that just like floats around. You're like, what did I save this money for? You know? Mm, that is, yeah, that sounds real icky. Like it sounds, I mean, sounds like robbery is what it sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like just, you know, the misinformation aspect mm -hmm. of, because folks don't necessarily know what to do with their money. And again, that's where I think it comes back to feeling safe and comfortable with the person that you're working with. And with you, it was like a no brainer. Like I had felt, I felt safe with, safe with you. And I was like, okay, this feels right. This is, this feels easy. Yeah. Also. That's how it should be. I, so when I first, oh God, over a decade ago, probably I sat down with someone and I felt like my dad was like scolding me. That's how I felt. And I was like, this is not like, this is not right. And I think I took that when I first started working with this office, I was like, I don't want to be like that. I want to know what hits home for them. And I want to cater something to that specifically. I don't want to push 
products on people. I don't want to push people to save outside of their comfort zone. Because obviously, every financial advisor makes money on commissions, what they sell, what you put your money into, et cetera. Whether that's off your advisor fees or you know life insurance or what have you, right? But I don't, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't about the money. It was really like educating my friends and family because nobody had educated me, right? And the more I started to do it, the more I was like, holy guacamole. Nobody like teaches these these things. They don't teach us in school. They just say, have fun. Bye. And then when you're on campus, you know, your freaking freshman year, they're like, want to open a credit card for 10 grand? You're like, 10 grand for sure. I'll do that. And then the cycle the cycle begins, right? And then it's hard to get out of because that's what's pushed into your face right when you become an adult. And it's, it sucks. It sucks it, bad. It does suck. It does. That's what happened to me. Yes. And you know, my mom, my mom, bless her heart. It was like the one financial advice she gave me. Don't get a credit card. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm get I'm getting a credit card. You can't tell a rebel to not get a credit card. Like this is not what you tell someone. You're like, gonna do you it. don't tell them not to do it. The rebel's gonna do it. Like yep. I gotta figure it out for myself in the hardest mm-hmm. way possible. And yes. it was ugly. It was yes. not fun. And that type of shame that comes back to you when you're spending money that's not yours, that you think is yours, it's yes. the most ridiculous cycle that you put yourself through and it's so hard to get out of mm-hmm. and and it's okay like it's okay if you're there but like also you can get out like you it's a, out. you can get out i was in quite a i still have my student loan and we'll see what happens with it yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see I'm what waiting. happens with i know <laughs> but yeah it's it's it it's you're able you're able to get yourself out of it it may take time but again it's like put one foot in front of the other and you can absolutely do that you can absolutely yes. get to that point of finding financial freedom and flexibility and yeah. working with someone like Kelsey you can get there <laughs> yeah, and there's obviously there's different ways to get out of debt like we really we try to teach heavily how to like snowball um, mm-hmm. which, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of people use, but a lot of people don't know. And they think like, oh, I have to pay off like my, um, my this first or that one first because this and this, and they always have an excuse about which ones. And then they just, they're on this cycle of paying 25% interest on credit cards and just get yucky, it's yucky, mm-hmm. yucky, yucky. Can you explain to folks who don't know what the snowball, I know what it is because that's what we use, but can you just share with folks what that is? Yeah. So, um, snowballing is basically like line by line going over what you owe, what the minimum is for each of your cards and what, like basically writing down what the interest is on each of your cards, um, and tackling, in my opinion, I like to tackle the smallest balances first because say you're paying all the minimum for five different cards and the last card is, I don't know, $80 a month. Once you pay off the lowest one, you have an extra $80 to now add to the second highest credit card, right? So now instead of making $120 on one card, you're now doing 200. And the cycle, like as soon as you pay that one off, you you take that extra 200, apply it to the third one to just kind of snowball um, out of that, because if you're constantly trying to pay extra on all of them, it just gets really hard to manage. So just like starting from the bottom <laughs> and now we hear, right? Like Drake, you just got to start from the bottom. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, snowballing is honestly the easiest way to get out of it, in my opinion. Um, and that may not work for everybody, but it works really well for a lot of people. So I think that's why we kind of, we preach that a little bit. It helps. It I mean, helps. that it, it worked. That's I, I, I think I went about it with the smallest. We, we did the smallest yeah. first and game changer. game changer was able to, and, and it was so hard because you're like looking at it when you first look at your credit card debt or whatever kind of debt you have. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how am I going to accomplish paying this stuff off? Like yes. there's no way. It looks so challenging and daunting and you're like, no, 
I yeah. don't want to. And what's funny is then you're looking at it, you're like, oh my God, I'm paying a thousand dollars a month just towards debt. Like what, again, what am I doing with my life? Like mm-hmm. I just got to start somewhere. You have gotta to start be. somewhere. And then when you've paid off that debt, then that's like, okay, cool. You were spending a thousand dollars on paying off debt. Well, now you can save that thousand dollars and yeah, a way that feels good for you. Yep. And another big kind of point is making sure that while you're paying off debt, you're also saving. So even that extra cash that you have every month, don't put it towards debt. Like make sure that you're saving also, because if you don't have a nest egg, Mm. you're just going to go right back into debt. Like, and then you're, you're again on this cycle of going into debt and paying it off and going into debt and paying it off just so that you can live and do the the Mm. things you want to do. Flat tire, put on the credit card. You know what I mean? Like if you have that money in savings, you don't go into debt, you don't acquire the interest. Um, and you can allocate that to something else. Right. Um, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's so thing. good. It's crazy. Yeah. But that's such a good word for, for folks, I think, because I don't know that when I don't remember, to be honest, and I should, I think maybe we had like a little nest egg, but it was tiny. And I know it was like something, but it, I think that's where the daunting aspect comes in when you're like just trying to pay off your debt, but you're also trying to save and you're mm-hmm. like, where is all this money going? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But 100%. But yeah, I, I cannot thank you enough for, for just the information that was provided and the integrity and the time that you took to make a plan for us, because it did feel really specific to us and our needs. Yes. And I know you've brought up the word product. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what (laughs) a product is and potentially how that can work for different people in different ways. Just kind of give some examples so people have that kind of context. Yeah. So I think obviously, you know, growing up, our parents say, get a good job, get a 401k, put money in your 401k. If, you know, max out your Roth, like they use all of these kind of terms growing up. And those are technically financial products, a 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, um, an investment account, any type of like stocks, life insurance, debt consolidation, like those are all products that can technically be like sold in a sense, but you're not really, you're not buying the product. Like you would go to the store and buy laundry detergent. It's purely a home where you keep your money or save your money or grow your money in that sense. If that makes sense. That makes sense. It sure does. (laughs) Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I did want to ask because you are a manager of accounting for Tony Robbins, the Tony Robbins. I know. So cool. Yes. And what has that environment been like? Because I'm sure that's also been like a motivating force to making, making your income and doing the work that you're doing. And again, it's that, like, I feel like the word regenerating, just like regenerative, like just keeps coming up because that's what you're doing. Yeah. So cool. And it's like positive energy, whatever you want to call it, you're regenerating that thing, but it's like with income and money flow and it's just a really sweet dance. Like what that's, what has that been like? It's been a wild ride. I'm going to tell you right now. It has been, so going from, I've said it a thousand times already. I feel like I'm going in circles with myself, but coming from the service industry where all your money's cash, you're making five grand a month. Like that's what you make. Like no questions asked. Right. And then going to what's really crazy. My first accounting job, which was six years ago, seven years ago now, uh, was for soup plantation in the accounting department. And I was making $18 an hour straight out of college. I was like, I am taking a huge pay cut. Why did I do this? What was I thinking? Terrible idea. So I still had to obviously like serve and have a second job to even just keep up my lifestyle in the beginning. I was like, this is not why I went to school. Like, this is not for me. Um, And then kind of just branching out, I got laid off. Um, I mean, we all know supplantation, sweet tomatoes no longer exist. (laughs) It's so sad. I like my heart. I love that place. Anyways, um, so I got laid off and I found another place that paid me more. And I was like, okay, I could do this. Like I've experienced now. 
I got really awesome like accolades from my last company re recommendation letters. Like I'm still friends with my VP um, over there and the director of accounting. Um, and <laughs> just like getting a new job and making more, I'm like, okay, well, if I'm like just beginning and I'm making another 20 K a year, just from like switching jobs, like what can I do if I just keep on this like track of trying to better myself and learn and just like basically killing it at work and being super flexible and like multiple, just very, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like I always trying to level up myself. And I had already like gone to college for accounting. Right. Um, so I was at that job and then I actually got recruited from that job to Tony Robbins. They said, Oh my God, your LinkedIn is great. This and this and this and this and this. Um, we think you'd be a great fit. And I was like, this is really weird. Like I would, that's when like LinkedIn was kind of like, did this, you think it was a scam? Not a scam, but like <laughs> the way that it is now where I think LinkedIn is the best thing in the entire world. Like if you're looking for a job or not even looking for a job, people could be looking for you while you're looking for them and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's a super intelligent, amazing tool. Um, and it's not as like social media e as like Instagram and Facebook and all those sure. shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I got found on LinkedIn and when I was going over the, the job description, I was like, who is the guy? Like, cause it doesn't actually say like Tony Robbins in the do in the job description. Right. And so she's like, Oh, Tony Robbins. It's like, cause my company is Robbins research international. And they're like, it's for a well-known like business, um, coach, etc. I was like, well, who is it? And they're like Tony Robbins. And I was like, shut up. I was like, he's in like his office in San Diego. I don't understand. Like, what are you saying? And I told my old job, I was like, I'm taking a long lunch. I went and had my interview and I basically like never went back to my old job. Like Hi. after they offered it to me, I was like, bye. <laughs> I am like, I'm super, super blessed because during COVID there was a layoff. I was not let go, um, but it gave me the opportunity to grow um, my self-confidence and my skill and my ability to provide certainty to my CFO and to Tony and um, um, I mean, multiple departments on that front. It just, I continue to like believe in myself enough to ask for what I think I'm worth. And every year when they give me more work, I go, well, it's that time of year again. Um, how about that? How about another raise? And I think it should be this. Obviously inflation, keeping up with gas and all these other things, right? There's all kinds of situations, but um, California is definitely expensive to live in, but just making sure that every, that I'm asking for what I think I'm worth at that particular time. And it's not like, oh, I'm the bee's knees or whatever. And there's obviously things that I'm still perfecting and learning. Um, but, you know, being, like I said, voted three years in a row as like a platinum player, um, and this most recent year I got culture queen, which there's only one in the whole company. I'm um, just like, I know. Yeah. But getting like getting audios from Tony, just like basically singing my praises and like just saying that all these nice things that people say about me when I'm in the accounting department, I'm not on the front lines of the events. I'm not in his, in his house, helping him with his, you know, um, not his lines, but like the creative team, like helps Tony with like his, um, uh, I don't even know what they're called. Just his like flow. Basically, his like, basically, yeah. His outline for how to like communicate yeah, so, everything. Like, he, I've never met him. He like, he doesn't, I wouldn't say he doesn't know who I am. Cause obviously he knows who I am from winning these things or being voted for these things, but just like, you know what actually really helps? And I'm just going to sidebar really quickly. Having, they say that you are the collective like personality and like vibe of the 10 people you spend the most time with. And mm -hmm. I feel like, and this has nothing to do with people that I've been friends with because I feel like every type of person has a season or a lifetime with you, whether that's like mm -hmm. 
your entire life or for like a summer where you were just like raging. I don't know. Like everybody has like their specific time with you. And I feel like the more money that we make as a couple, like the more money our friends start to make, which is really interesting. Mm. And I think it's just like that, not a level of understanding, but like now that they see us like getting raises, they're like, Hey, I got a raise or Hey, I got a new job or Hey, this or Hey, this. And we're always trying to like, you, 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 right? And it's just like, it's so nice to be in a place where we don't have to worry about money, but we don't have to worry about our friends worrying about money either. Mm. You know what I mean? So we're all like, just on this level of traveling and parenting and, you know, just like doing the dang thing, doing life, but like Mm. on our terms and not You get to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. And you're not living in fear, which is very different than what you grew up with. Yes. I'm blabbing. You're not. You're (laughs) fine. You're great. And I think it's important to like, to notice and to, to really feel into that because I think most people have some negative experience and feeling around money. Mm -hmm. And to know that it's been different for you and now you're feeling that like, it really is like momentum, right? Like you're getting into a new groove and like Mm -hmm. you're, it's, I, I've, I've said this word, I don't know how many times, but really you are regenerating a new cycle. You're creating something new for your family Mm -hmm. and it's just coming into that flow of like what this feels like and, and it feels new. And that's probably exciting. Well, and I think the most exciting part is that I had been in a few companies where I really wasn't appreciated. I work really hard. I have good work ethic. I am smart as hell. I am very punctual. I, um, I'm just, I feel like I'm an, an all-star interviewer as well, to be honest. Like when I go in an interview, I'm like, man, I killed that. You know what I mean? Just like vibing with whoever I'm interviewing with, but being in a company now where I'm appreciated, even like in the shadows, like just to be appreciated and know that like, if I ask for a raise, they're probably going to give it to me because they know that I could very well go somewhere else and make more money. I think that's a very big thing. And to be honest, if you hate where you work and you're not getting raises and just like not where you think you should be, go somewhere else. I'm like, a full supporter of literally just finding something new at the drop of a hat. You have no ties to them. They have no ties to you. They could easily lay you off or let you go. You know, there's just like, I don't know. Yeah. You got to do what's right for your family and what's right for you. And unfortunately, most of that surrounds money. Um, right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one day I want to work for myself, but I'm not there right now. So look at this platform you have started. Are you kidding me? You are. Yeah. One day I hope, I hope, I hope. Yeah. I have, uh, I have some plans in the works for other things, you know, so we'll see, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud to have seen your cycle from being a server and, to now working for Tony Robbins and being a broker and helping friends and helping family members. And really you are a pillar in many of these people's lives that you get to imprint this, this knowledge and this wisdom that you've taken the time to understand for yourself. So thank you. Thank Thank you. you for changing our lives. Thank you for, really, I mean, you're not only, not only have you changed our lives, but you're helping us regenerate the new thing for our family and yeah. our new cycle that we will eventually have when we have a baby one day. I love it. I, you know, that hits my heart so much that even just the fact that you're like, really like you, you took it and you're, you're like, you're going to go with it and run with mm-hmm. it. And that's like, where you are now, like you could easily have just been like, mm, that's not for us and brushed it off and 
And like, that's not the time, but the fact that you're like owning it and really like, this is our life now. That is like all I could ask for. I mean, it's because it's so different, you know, it's like my mom and dad are talking about some of the same things that Brian and I are talking about. And like, that makes me sad that they didn't have someone to educate them sooner. They didn't grow up with that. Yeah. You know, my dad grew up in East LA. Like he did not grow up with financial advisors trying to give him the best course of action on how to save his money. You know, that just wasn't part of his life. Yeah. And, well, and I think a lot of like, if you go to the bank and you're like, I need a financial advisor, they'll charge you. I don't, I don't charge people. I what I want to do this out of the kindness of my heart because it doesn't feel right to for people to not know stuff that could easily be like out in the universe that nobody tells you. You know what I mean? Like it it doesn't if I'm learning it, obviously for my own sanity, but if I could teach you and you take it and make your life better, like why wouldn't I want to do that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just a thousand percent. Yeah. No, and I I would encourage all of y'all that are listening. I'm going to be, once the episode is up, I'm going to be putting Kelsey's information in the show notes Me. so you can connect and reach out. And she's really an incredible person to work with. And again, you know, she mentioned if, if it's not a good fit with Kelsey and, you know, she has someone else in mind for you, that's still an option. Yes. And it's a good option. It's a good option always to take care of yourself in a way that we're not necessarily taught to take care of ourselves. Yes. Right? 100%. It's self-care in a different way, but a, a really helpful way. <laughs> we need money. We need money to even care for ourselves and to feel safe fully. We need money. So. Yes. Yes. And it's... <laughs> We need money, you guys, and we got to learn how to manage it. That's, that's it. It's, it's available, right? It, yeah. Yes, it was made up. Yes, it was this thing that was created. I get it. Like, I was that person forever. Like, really, I would say things like, fuck money. It's just a made up thing. However, if we can use it in a positive way. Why not do that for ourselves so that we can feel safer in our homes and our bodies? Security. Security. Peace of mind. Something. Peace of mind. Peace of mind is a huge one. There's infinite, infinite money. Go get it. There's no reason. Go get it. There's no reason you shouldn't. There's no reason you shouldn't. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope that you all reach out to Kelsey because she really has changed our lives and, and it's worth your time to, to do so, you know, do, do with whatever information was shared today that makes sense for you do, do that thing. But, um, I promise you wouldn't be making a mistake by reaching out. Oh, so I love you. Thank you. I love you. So Thank you for this sweet conversation and for educating us and, and, you know, just teaching us more about how we can, do the damn thing. Yeah. I change the game. Change the game. Change your stars. Do it now. Start somewhere, right? Start somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love you, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you so me. much. Thank of course. You. Such an honor. I love you. Love Please you. tell the boys I say hi. I will. Okay. Joke. Bye. Bye. Hey there. It's Danae again. Just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time and energy with me. If this podcast resonates, please like, subscribe, follow, and share if you're willing. Reviews help too. So if you're feeling the vibe, please leave a review where you can. Sending all the love. Peace.